All right, so we're going to have a look at our first uh, corner case. We've got some ISIS, some RIP, some OSPF. Um, you've got two OSPRs here. Um, despite the colours, you have to remember the OSPRs are also both running RIP and OSPF uh, for them to be uh, functional in that way. Um, the ISIS represents a much larger backbone. I've taken just a portion of the diagram. The idea is that um, a route representing all of the ISIS gets passed to the RIP and the OSPF. Uh, the RIP goes back into the ISIS, the OSPF goes into the ISIS, and then the RIP and the OSPF we would like to see each other. So this could be, say, data center one and data center two, um, or vice versa, connected to an MPLS backbone, all part of the same um, organization. So we would like to, uh, to export a default route to begin with into RIP. Only problem is ISIS um, doesn't have one. The ABRs here in ISIS are setting the attached bit, and these routers here are generating their own route. Therefore, when we want to export this uh, default route into RIP, because there's really only one way out, this is part of a, the data center that's connected to this MPLS, there's no uh, default route to export, so we're going to create one with an aggregate. We see it up here, so we're going to go into the routing options, going to create the aggregate default route. You can see it here in this diagram. We're going to be exporting that out of RIP, um, we are going to select it with the uh, policy statement, we're going to tag it, and out it goes. Of course, it's going to start with an administrative distance of 130. Uh, it's going to be flying out RIP as 100. Uh, if it was to go through on the other side, the aggregate could not defend itself, it's set too high. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do an import filter on the RIP on the other ASBR. We're going to select from protocol RIP, we're going to select from the tag and we're going to reject it. And obviously the import on one ASBR blocks the export on the other and vice versa. So that's one half of the redistribution here between ISIS and RIP. What about the other side? Okay, well we're going to be um, exporting from RIP uh, into the ISIS, so that becomes an ISIS export. We can see that here. Uh, so uh, we've got a policy statement, we're going from the RIP to the ISIS and um, and the first term of that uh, says go from RIP and accept it and export it. Now, you'll notice here that we don't have an import policy. They're sort of frowned upon with ISIS. As we said, it is possible from version 17 onwards. However, um, if we don't need it, we don't need it. Uh, let's see how the numbers actually work. Well, we have to remember that we are running wide area networks only on this, uh, on this little design here. And so what that means is that the route that's coming out of the RIP into the ISIS, uh, in the RIP it's going to start uh, with a preference of 100. As it goes into the ISIS, instead of taking the preference of 160, it's actually going to take a preference of 15. And that 15 preference is going to go to the other ASBR. It would dominate the original RIP route. It would replace the RIP route if we weren't careful and that would be then advertised the other direction. We would get suboptimal routing, possibly a routing loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually set the RIP preference to 14, and then that way it will be able to defend itself. And so in this way, we don't need that import policy, although we could have it.